I am unashamed. What about you? So, Jace, you got a gift. I, I want to start today with uh, we love gifts. We get a lot of stuff. You guys are oh, awesome. Yeah. Unashamed Nation. So, well, hold on. Now. Before we talk about the gift, I thought I, I wanted to talk about what we did. We've, we've accomplished something on this show, this podcast. Really? Yeah. Usually you're the least aware of anything we do of, of consequence. So <laughs> you don't know what number we're on. You don't know what. So, so, so I'm, you've intrigued me already. So here's what happened. I had a, a memory, a faint, distant memory hit me on an earlier podcast. And it was that we used to call a, a bank to see what time <laughs> it was or what temperature. <laughs> this is right. before technology took off. And so we talked about that. I actually called, I dialed the number. Did y'all run that on when I, oh, so, so they, so, so they evidently, cause I've never watched one of these podcasts. Yeah. I've only heard about it. <laughs> well, <laughs> so, and, and I and look, I rem, just, just to bring up the audience back up to speed. So I remarked when you remembered the number and you, there's no way you've called this number at least in 15 to 20 years, at least. Ah. <laughs> I'd say I probably called it seven, eight, ten years ago. Oh, you are behind the time. I mean, yeah. cell phones have been around since then. <laughs> well, hey, I stay at places. So Jace remembers the number to call and get the time and temperature, which used to be, which he's right. I mean, back in the day, that's how you knew what the that temperature of the time was. And you I know. told the story about I used to deviate on wherever I was going to find a bank so I could see what time it was. So it's kind of seems kind of silly now. So we said we when we did it, we said people are going to now call this number yeah. because somebody has been sleeping for the last 15 so, years. So are you ready for the reveal? <laughs> so what happened? We shut it down. <laughs> <laughs> you can no longer call, call that number. The red phone went off. Somebody said We've made contact. There's a human out there the that is calling. The time of temperature. And they had a meeting, <laughs> and they no longer offer that service. <laughs> so now here's what I'm excited about. What's next? What can we do? <laughs> what Phil? else can we destroy that's been around for 30 or 40 years? I would just say regarding time, <laughs> uh, Chicago was right. <laughs> not the city of Chicago, but the the band, the singers. Does anybody really know what time it is? <laughs> I would just simply say, if you count time like I do, mid morning, after dinner, about dark, before about dark, it's just late. before daylight, middle of the night, middle of the night. <laughs> I just think it's it's a it it's. Uh, improves your mental health you're not really tied down to minutes so do you remember the last time you Plus, called i mean i don't know i've never heard of a, a man which jace it would be, it would be that time, driving around find some bank losing time to see what time it is can you really lose it though no well, do you remember i can't do you remember the last time you called the bank line to find out the time and temperature uh, yeah no well I was just surprised that the power of Unashamed Nation rose up, and we just shut that down. So the question is, how many listeners, because I, I just had this in my mind when this went out, that it was just too tempting to not call it, to check it, because we, we said the number on the air. And so I'm just wondering how many of you out there actually. So the number is still there. The number's still there because, look. Well, now, though, you call it, and it's. <laughs> you have you reached, have reached a, number. a number that has been disconnected. We right, disconnect. I'll tell you this. I, I got an idea on what we can attack next. All right, what's next? Here's what's next. Because this morning, when I was checking, is that is that my phone? Oh, it's just beeping and bopping. Uh, Keep going. Uh, when I was checking the the status of the the stocks this morning, after morning prayers, so I got my priorities right. Phil. That's right. I always pray before. We start. Uh, all of a sudden, my TV starts flickering, and it went, uh, 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 and this 
thing popped up on the screen that I've seen pop up many times through the years. It said, this is only a test. This is okay. the emergency, emergency broadcast. broadcasting. So you say, what's my point? Now, that happened this morning. Whatever day it is today, it's sometime in November. That happened. So I'm like, I started thinking about every time I've had an emergency at my house, which has only been a couple times. But we had a hurricane come through. Hurricane force winds. This is now time for the emergency broadcast to function. And guess what? Power was out. TV was out. So why are we doing this test every three days <laughs> when an actual emergency happens and nothing happens? We can't see it. <laughs> so why are we interrupting the program to show what would happen in an emergency when every emergency that I've been through, we didn't have the capability to do what you're testing? So let's shut that down next. So, so. you want to shut down the emergency broadcast system? No, I want to shut down the testing of it every two days when the odds are in our favor that we won't be able to see that because we have no power. And you need it. It's not there. So let's do this. Let's test it once a year. It's living in a world with computers. Everybody trusts them. But yeah, but but there's constantly friction and they don't know how to go this and this. It reminds me of of the the computer uh, guru. You almost said fr- Joe. you almost said freak, but you yeah. you, you pulled short. Joe. I just want to He's thank mellow. you for that. He's Jersey mellow. Joe looked around. He <laughs> found himself and his wife and children surrounded in New Jersey by a maniac world, <laughs> and he basically looked at his wife and said, "Let's get out of here." So they packed their grip and they came to Louisiana. And they came to Louisiana partly because of what they had heard us talking. They said, "That's yep. the way I want to think." Yep. Yeah. So when it comes to time, he said, "Oh, look." I said, "What's the problem when people have computers? What you, you're a, you're a troubleshooter? They all call him. If you got trouble with computer, call this dude. Mm-hmm. He sit there by by our computer all day, and the phone, then the computer, they give him a buzz, and he said. I said, what's the biggest problem with computers? Because all I need is on, off, turn the lights on, turn you, the lights on. You don't, you're not. And on. anyway, he said, he said, human error is the problem yeah. with all computer maladies. It's human error. But you realize. 99.9 is the way he put it. But Phil, if every, people don't know how to run the machine they're seated in, seated in front of, and therefore he comes in to line them out, he said, they curse me. Caress me, call me, everything on the book. When I'm telling them this, no, here's what you need to do. What you did was you made a mistake when you clicked on the ba 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 ba. And he said they they curse me. They say I'm a no good, filthy language. He but said, Phil, everything in the computer. The reason human error is the number one problem is everything in a computer a human put in there. Yeah, and humans are good at making errors. Right. So you're always going to so, have it. Well, I've made it my goal to make it through life computer-free, as close as I can get. So, so far, if we're keeping up, number one, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. That's Hebrews 13, 8. So that should take care of the time calling to see what time it is. That's good. I like that. Okay. Number two, uh, we all make errors. Yeah. So God's grace is looking more appealing. Okay. So what's, three, what's your third point? Well, I have shades <laughs> on today because I'm not trying to be cool. I but. thought you were trying to go dad. <laughs> No, that wears shades since I'm actually, you know, I'm a fisherman. I was raised on the water. Phil trained me how to fish and I always had sinus problems as a kid. And I never could figure out why till later on in life. I realized that I'm allergic to the slime that is produced off of a scaled fish. Now, I can eat the fish, but if I touch the slime and get it near any kind of orifice <laughs> i'm in trouble for a couple of days <laughs> That's good to know. so i was catching these huge crappie uh in a pond near me that will oh remain boy, here we go again unnamed i mean huge i have a picture maybe we can show that can we do that i caught i mean i caught just a giant yesterday so i catch the fish i go over there i clean them but when i as i'm cleaning them i realize there's a small hole in my glove 
So I, I thought, I need to make a note of that and not rub my eyes later. So I washed my hands real good. I, I thought I had taken care of it. But at some point in there, I must have just got it near my eye or nose. And well, something, something gave me a runny nose, and you notice my voice is uh, yeah, rather, I thought you were trying out for the low. Oak Ridge Boys or yeah, something. Yeah, uh, but what happened was there was a sequence of events which I haven't seen in so many years. This dates way back. I, I had never had a runny nose. Yeah, I measure mine by until hour, now. hours. All right. Every well, I, few hours. I I'm experiencing what you say you have a trouble with all the time. I actually have a runny nose yeah. and a lower voice. Yep. It's moved and, into the voice box. And You know, you know Ms. what that means. Miss K caught Winter it first. Is here. But she gave it to me, and I said, well... <laughs> So I'm on about the third well, day. Well, I'm feeling much better what now. What am I going to do? And you're probably going to give it to us. So winter's <laughs> But here, I live with it. So and we're, uh, what are we, a couple weeks away from duck season? We're actually, duck season is this Saturday. <laughs> this Saturday. Yeah, this is. Once again, a few days, remembers the bank number, but doesn't know A few know days from Jace, while you're watching the internet unfold <laughs> this morning, oh, here we go. your dad was down there Scouting. putting diesel, putting diesel and a tractor that has a pongo pump on it, pumping water, that's that is pumping about 1,500 gallons a minute. Then I have another one that's been running around the clock. We have now transferred the flow. Instead of below the middle levee, we're backing it up into the privet hole. And the dog water is still running. So by day after tomorrow, the water regime, we'll the blind ready. regime, and the food regime, those things, three three things, which I sort of head up. Well, you say on. those three things will be complete. They'll all come together. Well, be nice to me because one of our listeners sent me a gift. I guess we had talked about this before. Must have been early on the podcast. We used to build fires in the duck blind, and one of our members of our party, old Mac Owen, he would, he would fix biscuits every day of duck season. And I, I guess we talked about that. And we'd have nestled and in between the biscuits. We would furnish Mayhaw the jelly, jelly. Mayhaw jelly, muscadine, blackberries, dewberries. Mm -hmm. And I'm not sure who makes this, but they found one. This listener did. Who is this? I can't even read I think that. it's Brandon. You can cook biscuits over an, open, over an open fire. Brandon Nash said he, he listened to the podcast. He heard that. But he backed up. Instead of following along with the podcast, he went backwards. Which is so funny he, because he heard this, I think, early on. He says on 170. He's Brandon, on 170. So Brandon, you're going to hear about this in about a year. <laughs> yeah. You're so, going to hear your name mentioned well, about it. <laughs> or, that's why I said, what is the over-under <laughs> on whether he catches up before the second coming of Jesus? <laughs> that's right. But he sent us this biscuit maker. Yeah. Sent it to you. And, and so I'm gonna, we'll use that this year in your honor. Because uh, I love these But things. the timing could not have been better because he it came the week before duck season the started. The week before duck season. Which is so incredible. I, you know, I wanted that to was a nice gift because you can put that at a certain uh, heat on these these uh, Cajun cookers we have. Right. They're, they're the best. And just a low fire, you put a little butter in there and wa wash them in the butter a little bit. And it's a can of biscuits. Put your canned yeah. biscuit, wrap biscuits, hit them, you know, and they poof, and you put them in there. Then you just turn them over about every four or five minutes, yeah. let them brown on both sides, and they they just. I'm gonna I'm gonna well, I'm gonna it, reach out to Mac because I'll be I'm coming Saturday, so I'm gonna reach out to Mac and find out if there was any little secrets because his yeah. were always perfect. Well, I mean, he were. had the right amount of time. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring this out at Christmas because you know at this point nobody knows what to get me and my family, and so this now this is this is good. Yeah. So this I'm going to use this as a Christmas present. Oh, well, there you go. Yeah, I'm going to tell to me it's like, look, something like this. <laughs> yep. This, these are the gifts that keep on. So going. we have a little heat in the blind. It does get cold in Louisiana, 20, 25. It's usually a 20. little while. but be a little freeze from time to time. We're but definitely we, we have, have hot to. biscuits around <laughs> the clock, so it's a pretty good deal. You can't beat it. Let's uh, Let's take our first break. So standing up for what you believe in can be challenging, especially in today's culture. And so one of our sponsors uh, is a group called Patriot Mobile, and uh, they are the only really Christian conservative uh, provider for your cell phone coverage. And so you want to maybe check these guys out because everything 
that they support are things most of our audience probably supports. And so uh, they offer broad nationwide coverage. Uh, they use the same towers as all the major carriers. Um, they have plans to fit any budget. Their 100% U.S.-based customer support team provides exceptional customer support. So they share values of religious freedom, constitutional rights, and sanctity of life. Check them out if you want to make the switch, patriotmobile.com slash fill, or you can call them at 972-PATRIOT. Get free activation with the offer code fill. So it's patriotmobile.com slash fill, or give them a call, 972-PATRIOT. So we've got uh, we've got a guest that is, has been patiently uh, waiting, listening. I, I, I'm going to ask him what he thinks about what he just heard. Uh, our, our lead in. I don't think it was earth shattering. <laughs> it wasn't like something to call home about. I think <clears throat> us shutting down the time and temperature is <laughs> is a moment in the history of mankind where we've now moved into a new technological age. <laughs> Where dinosaurs are dying all around us, and we help contribute to that, Phil. So, so Harold Harold Cronk is with us. Harold is the uh, is the author of uh, the uh, the Beard Ballad, uh, which we talked about on last week. Harold, we mentioned this on the uh, podcast, and uh, and then Zach wound up getting you on today, which is great. So, Dad talked a little bit about that. So, we'll talk about the book in just a minute. But for, so, first of all, so you've been listening to this uh, what we call our cold open. What, what what are your what's your take on the on the opening montage of the Unashamed podcast? Is it is it the the life life changing, earth shattering uh, beginning that you hope for? <laughs> well, let me tell you guys, today is a very special day <clears throat> in Michigan, and I don't know what Zach was thinking me putting me on today, but today is the opening day of firearm deer season in Michigan. So for some reason, I'm not in a blind oh. where I should be with that biscuit maker right there making some biscuits. <laughs> yeah. See, we like you already, Harold. No wonder, no wonder we were able to do this book with you. You're like me. So I was supposed to be in Texas speaking Saturday, which is opening day of duck season here. For the last five years, I've been somewhere on the road on opening day. And, and thankfully, the Lord opened the door for a post moment for to next uh, spring, so I'm going to be able to hunt. So. Well, I'll tell our man here, Grunk, Grunk, right? Crunk. Crunk. He's been calling crunk you Grunk because we... Grunk. we, we I want to keep add the G, but, <laughs> but Crunk, I'll, I'll give you this. Your book is made manifest on what you're seeing, what he was discussing in the book. Yeah. It's what he is seeing because you have a father and two sons. Correct. Bearded sons. And we seem to have uh, the following the Jesus Jesus Christ way. We bonded. It just we just bonded, and it <laughs> seems to have worked out because we're sitting here a little conversation about life itself and about duck blinds and all that. You say, but we're living proof that Crunk was right on his book. That's right. So so yeah so let's talk about it Harold so tell me a little bit about kind of your what was the idea behind the book it's really interesting it's a, it's a children's book you know dad read it to a group uh, at our church and he actually he told the story one of the <laughs> one of the kids was a must have been from PETA or something because she was shocked that uh, that dad was going to kill animals but he, he she had not been trained by her father that the the harvesting of animals is biblical and she fell back on the floor she said oh no i love animals and y'all are shooting them and i said but we love animals too fried oh boy so, she, she, she went oh no 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 she's probably gonna be in a counselor in front of a counselor yeah, we're one gonna, day and it's we gonna go back her. to that moment we the got reading her of the beard ballard by phil roberts so, yeah. so thank you Harold, for putting this small child into therapy uh but uh tell, tell us a little bit about kind of your idea behind the book where did it come from and all that yeah well first phil i'm so thankful that you're able to uh to write the foreword for this thing it um it's a project that it kind of came about um in a very honest way i picked up my son one day and gave him a big nuzzle hug and he pushed me away and said dad your face is all pokey and rough and i said those are my ferocious facial follicles and uh and in that moment kind of the idea was born so um i have this amazing coffee shop that i write in every day i'm uh, obviously a film director and I, I write screenplays. So I came to write that m next morning and this book just poured out of me. 
And, uh, you know, I recently lost my dad to, to Alzheimer's, I guess, you know, going on two years ago now. And I just started recalling all of the things that my dad taught me growing up in northern Michigan, all the wonderful things that uh, that he shared with me. And I thought, man, I, I think I took for granted what an amazing man he was and, and all this wonderful knowledge that he passed on. And so I wanted to do something for kids where, you know, look, I've wanted to read to my son at night, but it's difficult to find books that that aren't affirming and aren't manly and yeah. things that I want to teach my son. Um, so I thought, why not just write it? And so this is what happened. Yeah, I love it. And, yeah, I love and in it. fact, I think, Carol, that it's it's one of the mis- missing ingredients in our culture right now is just, you know, good, um, God affirming masculinity. And, you know, because of so many other things, whether it's gender bending to, you know, not knowing who your dad is and being raised by your grandmother. I mean, there's so many different, you know, cultures within cultures that don't have this. And so I think as many tools as possible that help people understand that, the better, right? Absolutely. And so, like I said, I'm in a coffee shop. So somebody apparently is getting a latte right now. <laughs> oh, you're in a coffee shop. He's so. in a coffee shop. <laughs> Boy, he's in his I was <laughs> looking around thinking, who's I think he's got a bearing loose on the rear end. <laughs> <laughs> we, no, that's all right. Because we, we, we're literally right next door, right outside our door, is where we keep all our hunting uh, equipment. I sound like that, and we say, call Jimmy Red. Call Jimmy Red. We got a, somebody got a bearing loose. So, so the, here's the deal, Harold. So I didn't, when I saw your name on the book, I was like, that name sounds so familiar. So I did what anybody except for dad would do. I Googled your name and I realized that not only are you an author of books, but as you just said a minute ago, you are a maker of movies, really good movies. Our audience is going to be aware of that before I was, uh, that you did guys, not dead. Uh, and, and the sequel to that as well. Right. And, and and that involved our some of our family. So what was it like? So you worked with Willie and Corey and Sadie? Yeah, yeah. Willie and Corey on God's Not Dead 1 and then Sadie on God's Not Dead 2. And uh, it was kind of interesting. On God's Not Dead 1, I meet, meet Willie for the first time. I'm like, hey, man, I just want you to know that in your honor, I started growing my facial hair out for the shoot because I didn't want to be embarrassed and show up clean shaven the first time we, we met. And he looked at me, and I had about two days worth of peach fuzz, and he says, man... That's pathetic. <laughs> <laughs> I thought we're going to get along just great. That's right. So, um, Welcome to the Robertson. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, great, great experience working with William Corey on God's Not Dead 1. And then Sadie was just fantastic in God's Not Dead 2. She was a natural um, yeah. without a lot of training as far as acting goes. She really brought a wonderful authenticity to, to that role uh, and to that film. So I'm very thankful and blessed to have had her as part of the cast for that movie. Well, we just want to say thank you for making great movies. You also did uh, Path to Redemption, Unbroken Path to Redemption. And and that was really interesting to me because I had loved the first film, Unbroken, about uh, Louis uh, Zamperini. And the, but you took the next step by showing, you know, his spiritual awakening that, of course, wasn't in the first movie. And so I, I thought it was really interesting. My old pal, Will Graham, uh, play got to play his grandpa Billy Graham in the movie, which was a really cool twist because yeah. you know that's what led him to accept Christ was that a Billy Graham crusade back in the day. So how how was that how was that experience in that movie? You know that was that was an incredible experience and getting to meet Will and getting to know Will such a great guy you know just a a wonderful man and uh, we actually just exchanged texts a, a couple of days ago. He's still waiting for me to buy a motorcycle so I can uh, go on a road trip with him. But I don't know if my mom's going to let me do that. Yeah. Because she doesn't like motorcycles. That's pretty much what was our rule growing up, too. Dad was like, no motorcycles, boys. Somebody said, why? And I said, it'll fall over. (laughs) Not enough tires. Not enough wheels. Not enough wheels. (laughs) Not enough wheels. It'll fall over. Don't get on it, but. Unbroken was, um, it was a great experience. Louis Zampariti had this amazing life journey. And people always ask me, what's the difference between, you know, Angelina's Unbroken and then the second one. And for me, it's uh, the first film was about Louis' struggle for survival. And, but the second film was about Louis' struggle for his soul yeah. and uh, battling the demons of PTSD right. and alcoholism. And um, man, his, his, for me, there's not a better illustration that no matter where you're at in your life, if you make that turn to the light, if you turn to the Lord 
and you accept your sins and you confess your sins, there's always hope for you no matter where you're at. That's great. And you're right. I mean, as, as amazing as the story was overcoming uh, being in a, you know, being a POW camp, the idea is what next? Because we know a lot of guys that survive a lot of difficult things. But if you don't have something bigger than that, then you're going to wind up in a place that's probably going to be very dark. And so, I mean, unfortunately, it happens all the time with a lot of our vets. And so that's why it's so important to, you know, for the, for anybody to understand how powerful Christ is. Let's, uh, so how, how do folks get the book, Harold? So tell them where to go. Uh, Beardbelly.com. And it's also available on Amazon. Excellent. I, ha- I have an idea for your next book. I, I I met a kid at an event the other night, and I said, when you grow up, are you going to have a beard like this? Because he was just staring staring at it. And he's like, well, that's why I have the mullet now. Because <laughs> he did. He had a he had, you know, full-blown mullet. <laughs> and he said, my mom hates it. But, she, but I told her, I can't have the beard. So the next best thing is a mullet. I said, eh, I don't know. But you could have mullet memoirs. <laughs> <laughs> there you go okay and that could be a uh, now you start a whole series of, yeah i'll uh, write the forward and we'll do some we'll <laughs> capture some of the most manly mullets in the history of all right so of it, it, there's the title right there just manly mullets manly manly mullet mullet so, so look, it just happened on Unashamed Nation, Harold. We're going to hold Jace to it. He is offered to write the forward if you write that book. So we'll, we'll have to see if that works out. Awesome. Yeah. Hey, man, thank you for being with us uh, and everything you do. You're doing great work for the kingdom. We appreciate it. And, uh, man, you just, just keep growing that beard and keep uh, raising the, your boy. <laughs> Sounds good. Thanks, guys. Hey, and I do have one. Can you guys see me? Yep. Yeah. I got one thing to show you. Right. I'm a proud uncle. This is uh, this is my nephew's oh, yeah. butt that he got uh-huh. that does about look three real. days ago. Oh my goodness! We don't have deer that size down in here. We no. got swamp deer down here, Harold. So, awesome. so you guys should come to Michigan. And Jace, the other thing is, in Michigan we have we have wonderful trout that don't have slime. Oh really? No. That's not true. But I want you to come up fishing. Sounds like a road trip. (laughs) There's always a pair of gloves. Just make sure they don't have a hole in (laughs) them. That's right. All right. Thank you, Harold. Appreciate you being with us. Appreciate you guys. All right. Take care. All right. Let's take another break. We couldn't really talk, have a podcast, Jace, without talking about hair, uh, which actually we've been talking about a lot lately because of beard books and everything, mullets and all the different kinds of hair. So what happens to the guy who realizes that he's losing his hair? That's, he, needs, he needs some help. He needs some help. And so one of our uh, longtime sponsors is a company called Keeps. And what they do is try to help you keep your hair. So if you're starting to lose it, you got to get to these guys pretty early. They can't regrow your hair, but they can help you keep uh, what you already have. They've got five-star reviews, uh, more than any of the competitors Uh, You can go online. They have a licensed doctor who's going to review all your info, recommend the right hair loss treatment for you, and then it ships straight to your door. So uh, it's a great company. Check them out if you need their help. Keeps, K-E-E-P-S dot com slash door. You're going to get 50% off your first order. So it's keeps dot com slash door. Keeps dot com slash door. Well, that was fun. Uh, Harold's, uh, he seems like a good guy. And I didn't realize he was uh, such a hunter, but that's, that's well, impressive. I figured. No wonder. Oh, in Michigan, but, there's like 700,000 deer hunters that, that go after a deer on the opening day. 700,000. Plus, they just grow big ones. That one oh, right there is huge. Oh, that's, I mean, there are some, they're up but, in big woods. Right? You know what's amazing is, I mean, there's people big, writing big books woods. on beards and we talk about them and, it, they're just they're doing what they do on their own. Yeah, you don't it have was, to just kind of let it go, right? It wasn't an idea. <laughs> this is happening. But somebody at some point in the history of mankind said, look, we need to be a civilized society. And that means you need to shave this hair growing off your face. Well, you probably don't remember this, Jace, but back in the day when we were putting out so much stuff when the show was going on, we actually did a children's book. Mom did one, something about a duck, like duck starts with D maybe or something. And then and then we did one called 
everything's better with beards. Yeah, I remember that. And it had pictures of like the Statue of Liberty with a beard and blah, blah, well, blah. Well, I'll give you the list just in case you've lost it somewhere. You It keeps your face warm, which in the wintertime, awesome. Yep. Good. It is a deterrent for – it's basically it acts like a windshield. Correct. Limbs, bugs. If you're in an open ATV or in a boat, mm -hmm. you can tell the difference in a, with a beard. I've versus had no black widow spiders on my body. Plural? Looking for <laughs> looking for somebody to sting. Were you in a cave? It is a, it's a terrible. And look, and I feel them moving, and, and I look down, be a black widow. <laughs> He's on my whiskers. <laughs> He wants to get through to the skin, but he has a layer of whiskers to get through. Yeah. Slap, slap him a couple of times. <laughs> did your down. heart rate go up during this encounter? It did. Oh, okay. Because you see that little mm -hmm. uh, red hourglass. I had something yesterday that crawled out of my beard. <laughs> I'd been in the woods, and I'd been over, and I was in a thicket. How many and, people lead with that state? And I was getting mud out of a thicket <laughs> and putting it down on the beaver dam to keep my water from leaking. And when I got home... Not realizing that I had carried this, I don't know what you call this thing. <laughs> Look, UFO. one was there was two of them. To the audience, he's holding here about a four one was long. tied to the other one, a smaller one, and then a big one. <laughs> and this thing was about rough, roughly that long. I would say had a kind of a grasshopper look about him, but not a grasshopper. I don't know what this thing was, but he was some kind of insect that came out of those weeds, and I felt something and. <laughs> and I and I tried to knock my case. I said, "What are you doing?" I said, "Because she was standing in front of me." <laughs> I said, "I said something was crawling on me," and I looked on my sleeve like that, and he was just like that, with with another one riding piggyback on him. <laughs> Were they mating? I said, maybe I looked down. I said, "I said, come here, let me yeah, show this, you something." What, what? Is getting she said, "What was it?" I said, "Come over here, let me show you." When she walked up and saw that thing. She said, good night. She said, don't let him bite you. I mean, he was. And I knocked him down on the floor, stomped him. Both Here's what I think. Well, I don't guess it matters since it resulted. Do him in, in a trash can. Yeah, in death. Now, whether he could have stung me or whatever, it wasn't a grasshopper. It was some kind of, I don't know what it was. I never had seen a varmint like that. Something well, new. I think him and his lady. out of my whiskers. Him and his lady friend <laughs> mistakenly <laughs> thought your beer was a nice, a nice bed. Soft, yeah, a, a nice soft Spanish moss bed. The but, weeds were as thick as my whiskers. Yeah. So between the two of them, I came out with this varmint. He went all the way home with me. I was going to say. I drove a mile with him in the pickup. He's back there, <laughs> but he had just appeared. I'm sitting on the, on the chair. He, he was obviously distracted with his young lady friend. <laughs> so, well, imagine his surprise. Surprise when he was transported he was to, five miles away. <laughs> but but he but the whiskers got in the way of his travels. So but beards in, in are insect, so to your but, point, it is a, a an insect and apparently spider shield. Well, uh, and it's great camouflage. It is a all kind of criminal behavior deterrent for happening to you. Because people other people with not so nice intentions when they see a person like Phil, the last thing they want to do is have any kind of confrontation with him whatsoever. Yeah, well, you know, so, the Warm Springs who filmed us at one time, yeah. remember Warm Springs? Yeah, the old, uh, they're, doing that, they're doing that mountain man thing now, but if you notice, all those guys are up there. I mean, they're trappers, hunters, uh, but you notice every one of them has whiskers because when they're talking to you, their, their beards are solid ice. Yeah, I mean, just solid ice. It's it's twenty below zero. Where is that at in Montana or someplace? Where do they film? Most of it, Montana, okay. the mountains, but I've been Alaska. Like that. When yeah. I hunt in Kansas and Th all those all guys, cold. you know, you say you, you ask them about whiskey, and they say, "What are you talking about? You you, you got to have them." Yeah, I mean, twenty five degrees below zero, and they're just on a snowmobile with their traps, you know, and they catch on a lot of armaments. But I mean. But but it's it's well, a rough rough life. But they, they got is, whiskers Bill, for you, a reason. You it wasn't your idea. No, this this one of our listeners' dad said that we needed to have one of those guys on. I think, and I looked him up. He's retired now. I don't think he's on the show anymore. But they were like, I just want to hear a conversation. I wish I had his name between this man and and Phil Robertson. Yep, they were what like about beard. 
Well, just about anything. Apparently, uh, this guy is just a you know, well, the, like dad, the like last born a hundred years too late kind yep. of guy. The last thing I'll say is it also is a time and money saver because you basically do nothing and you spend nothing. I think well, it's as true. simple. It, it is true. It, it, it's as simple as this. For some reason, our culture, with all their sexual sins and all, but they, that one of the ways they try to punish and thwart manhood is via the whiskers. To them, this 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 says manhood. They don't like that at all. They're they effeminate. I think people hmm. people equate it with insanity too you know when you if you see somebody with unkept they'll call it unkept facial hair they'll think oh he's probably crazy mm -hmm. i'm not sure where why they just they just tagged it that way well because sometimes in our culture y'all would notice but people that just sort of let themselves go may be a little crazy so yeah. maybe that's where they're gonna put let's take a, another break so one of our newer sponsors uh is a is a group called dwell and i had never heard of it before but it's a bible app and it's inspired by the psalmist command to hide the word of god into our hearts of course right off the bat that got my attention as i was like this is something we need for our podcast and so what it is dad for those that don't have a bible you know like you do a lot of people now the young people they use their phone or computer you know for the word of god and which is great i mean that's a great that's one of the good things you can use the internet for uh, is to be able to have this or have an app. And so it's a read-along experience uh, is what this is. And uh, it's really, they have it laid out where you can read through the Bible. Really well done. And here's how you get started if you want to check them out to go to Dwell. You go to Dwell App, D-W-E-L-L-A-P-P, -L -L -P -P, dwellapp.io slash unashamed. You're going to get 10% off a yearly subscription or a 33% off Dwell for Life. So that's 33% off, which saves you 50 bucks. So check them out, dwellapp.io slash unashamed. Commit to the scripture for the rest of the year and the rest of your life. I'll take that as a compliment. <laughs> but duck hunting, You've if you didn't before. have whiskers during duck season, when that north wind is hitting you in the face and it's sleeting or raining or snowing, trust me when I, when I tell you, that whiskers help a lot. Well, we're down here on what we would call the balmy end of the 48. That is it, correct. You go up where, where Cronk is from, huh. you get up in Michigan and all that. We're talking about rivers that freeze over for like months. You are correct. So it's a pretty rough. It's you know, like we're going to climb mountains. For, you know, we're going to show you we can climb to the top of a mountain snow-covered hills, but you notice every one of them that do that, they have, they have big beard. beards. That's exactly right, to protect it. So so yesterday, Jase, you missed my sermon because you were at the movies or whatever you did. I and, did, but I, <laughs> the, the church I went, they had at the movies, and they, okay. take, they take, which they don't have many to choose from, but they'll take movies with a spiritual theme, and they kind of do a thing. They do it every year. I they, bet they've look, done one of Harold's movies before, right? Because I mean, maybe so. Yeah. I don't know. Well, this, this the one they did was Wonder, and which it was, I was a wreck after that because it goes along with what happened in my daughter's life. Because mm -hmm. the kid in the movie Wonder, which if you haven't seen it, you you need to watch that. It I, was uh, you know had cranio cranio facial yeah. issues. I think he had had twenty five or twenty seven surgeries or whatever. But they kind of looked at Hollywood, kind of looked at it from how he looked and the fitting in when he was about in junior high, which is the toughest time for that with a kid. But there's so much more of that story, the day-to-day -day workings of trying to get your kid with this condition to breathe better, eat better, just have a more comfortable life in dealing with this problem with all the surgery. So... Yeah, it was tough, but it was good. But I hate I missed your sermon. Well, so what I was going to say was that so I, I dealt with Matthew 17 and 18, which is where we're at in our text. I did both those chapters in one sermon, which was interesting to get that done. But in the open, Jays, you you would have liked this. So I, so I'm, I feel like I need to give it to you because you would have appreciated it had you been there. Um, I had tuned in the week before to watch Dad on the live stream because I yeah. was in Austin. So I'm listening to our live stream host. It was Rucker and Chris Howard, Corey's mom. 
they were the live stream host. We have a host every Sunday. They talk, you know, they interact with people and kind of tell what we're doing that day. So the uh, subject of my vest that I, because I've kind of, that's my look now. I've been, I call it my man girdle. <laughs> and what, what is the deal with the vest? What I don't know. I just started wearing them. We need because an intervention on it just I started wearing them because it kind of helps, you know, hold in everything. And so I like them. <clears throat> so anyway, they brought it up, you know, and, and Rucker was, you know, giving me a little jazz about the vest. So Chris Ann, who's a dear old friend, she's my next door neighbor. We've known each other for, you know, 40 years. And uh, she said, well, he could, because Rucker said he needs to wear an alligator vest. And she said, well, he can't wear an alligator vest because he needs them expandable. You know, talking about my girth. Do they make vests out of alligators? Oh, I don't think so. Um, But, you know, Rucker, what what does he know? What does that mean, alligator? Well, he was like, he needs to do something. He needs to bling it up a little bit. He was like, he's too dull with his vest. So, so, So Chris made a little tap at my weight, you know. Which is funny, but Chris Howard weighs about 80 pounds and has her whole life. She's the skinniest person I know. So I was like, okay, well, I think they've opened a door for me to, you know, comment. Because since they brought up my girth, I'll bring up her lack of girth. So at the start of my sermon, days, I said, I'm not offended. I'm really not because I talk about, you know, needing the expandability. I said, but I never take um, vest expansion advice from a person who once almost choked on a Tic Tac, <laughs> which is a true story. I mean, a Tic Tac, I said, that's one skinny esophagus when you can't take down a Tic Tac. Of course, everybody starts laughing. Then I said, this woman has never seen her own shadow. That's how skinny she is. Yeah. She, she doesn't cast a shadow. No. She weighs 80 pounds. She wants a housekeeper made up a bed with her in it because she thought, it was a wrinkle in the sheets. Yeah. That's how skinny this woman is. Yeah. And then my last, of course, everybody's laughing. Last one I said was that when she goes to the grocery store, she has to wait for someone to walk up to activate the glass door. In other words, it won't pick her up. <laughs> and then I looked at Perky and I said, Perky, did you get that? That was a joke within a joke because what would she be doing at the grocery store? Yeah. Of course, everybody just roared. So that was my little Chris Ann roast, Jace, at the beginning of my sermon. Then I told him, you know, I loved it. It was all done in fun. So that's what hmm. you missed at the beginning. Well, that's that. pretty funny off the top of your head. So I looked up alligator vest. and If uh, there is one, I might go for it. Well, the number one search for that is what do you call an alligator in a vest? I don't know. An investigator. <laughs> 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 that reminds me of old Saturday night, the Saturday night last day gator. That reminds me of a Saturday night live skit when the guy said he was Jesse Jackson. He was talking about Jesse Jackson. Jesse Jackson said, Not only do I deny the allegations, I deny the alligator. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that's funny. Funny. Speaking of that, I, there's one uh, water, water is down in a section over there. And I saw on the bank one lying there on the ground, and I'd say 10-footer, maybe 11, wide, wide, wide. I mean, this thing is a bull. On our property? Oh, yeah. Wow. He's, he is a bull. Yeah. And I thought to myself, you know, it's a, all these weeds and thickets, I go out in there cutting that brush. I wouldn't want to run up on this thing. And, you know, we always say, you know, no big deal, but let's take our last break. We always, because we you know they're pretty docile. You rarely see them attack somebody. But Just I was watching. Lying on the ground. I was watching a video the other day of some guy in Brazil, and I don't know if it was one of our alligators or a crocodile. But look, he's just swimming out there, and all of a sudden you see that thing look like a torpedo. And I mean, he took a big chunk out of his arm, and I thought, well, it it does happen because I oh, actually yeah. saw it on video. Yeah, I just thought about my Labrador retrievers well, retrieving the, the ducks. dogs. That's exactly right. I mean, you know, you got ducks lying around for the gators, and you got your dog going after your duck. I mean, it could not end well. <laughs> That's exactly right. So anyway, that was the lead into my sermon. But my sermon was actually about this text, and we only have a few minutes left. But Jace, I thought we would um, revisit kind of where we left off last time, which was the end of Matthew seventeen about the temple tax, because I had made the point at the end of my sermon that Jesus is really the ultimate point of that whole thing was that he's greater 
than the temple and, and all that. He was making a point that, you know, the, the sun is greater than whatever they're trying to do. But the way he went about getting the money for the tax, awesome. which I thought was funny. And of course, I had but some. What I do as a treasure hunter, it was awesome. Right. Because I, you can sense the excitement of that process of finding some lost coins, which I got one of these when I was in Greece. I was looking for some of these drachma coins. Yep. And they said they're real cheap. And so I'm like, so I had the missionary there. He's like, "Well, I'll, I'll take care of you." I said, "Well, I want I want the four drachma because of this story here." Did he actually get one? Well, he he, he oh, said, he's, he's gonna "Next do time it. I'm in the U.S., I'll." So I know, made the point. There, there's that, a law about you know taking money out. Oh, I got that, you. So. so I made the point, Jay's, that Jesus. I mean, he's the creator. We've already seen that he can take bread and fish and multiply a small amount to feed thousands of people. So he can create matter. So I said, he could have just said, when Peter asked him about the tax, he could have just reached in his pocket in his robe and pulled out the four drop of coin. Right. Or he could have, I said, he could have done the old reach behind your ear. You know, like the magician does. Oh, look, Peter, here's a four drop that was hiding behind your ear. So I said, he could have done all that. Instead, he instructed him to go down and catch a fish, and and in the mouth of the fish would be the coin. So what? Why did he do that? Is the question. I think it's just because it's just like when you're sitting around, and you're like, it's like with your buddies. I just think back when I was younger, and we'd be like, I believe these doves will be on this field, and they're they're like, there ain't gonna be anything there, and you're like, I'm telling you, it you trust me. <laughs> there's a trust that you come up with an idea. Well, this is so, it's kind of like, I feel like they're sitting around. He's like, go down and catch the first fish and it'll have our tax coin in there. I mean, it's like, are you going to trust him enough <laughs> to go do it, it? As crazy as this story sounds, would you be willing to go do that? Right. So I brought up the illustration on some of the hunting ideas I've had about guys sitting around there, like things that seem, I mean, probably back in the day when I'd have these ideas about going frog hunting on a golf course, you know, I always had somebody with me. <laughs> somebody said, as crazy as this is, I mean, they're putting us under the jail if we get caught. I mean, these fancy, fancy types. That's right. So my yeah. question to you, Jay, so 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 Peter's a fisherman, right? So he the first fish he catches is just what Jesus told him. He opens his mouth and there's the four drop my coin. Yeah. Being a fisherman, did he then cast again to see if he would catch another fish that had another coin in his mouth? Probably. He had to. I mean, who wouldn't try it? Or maybe <laughs> then the third fish, because like somebody's yeah. fishing that hole trying to find that out. Is, is I there- mean some people, you know, the scholars, they say, well, he just probably was using this as an illustration or an embellishment, but I don't think so. I don't think so I, either. I think he went down there and caught the fish. <laughs> well, I mean, I, I was trying to relate. I mean, the difference would be if a guy, we go frog hunting on a golf course and then throw in, it's like the third frog we catch will have a half dollar in his mouth that's rare and we can sell it and pay our taxes with. Now then that's when people say, no, wait a minute, Jay. You have to remember <laughs> the context in all these things. You have Jesus on top of a hill and he's brought two individuals that have been supposedly dead or gone for 2000 years, right at it. You're like, they just appear with him and you say, so you you read a text that says now he has appeared once for all at the end of the ages. That's when Jesus just showed up 2,000 years ago, born of a virgin. Uh, for all at the, he's appeared for, for all at the end of the ages to do away with sin by the sacrifice of himself. So he's saying we're already in the end of these ages, this time frame, when Jesus showed up. Just as man is destined to die once, and after that to face judgment, 
So Christ was sacrificed once to do away the sins of many people. And he will appear a second time. Not to bear sin, not this, not the next time, but to bring salvation to those who are waiting for him. So there's two appearances. Granted, he appeared to the Apostle Paul. He made an appearance there, but that wasn't the context of what he's saying here is he came once to, to remove the sin of the, the earth. Right. If they would but trust him. He's got two guys with him that's supposed to be dead or gone bringing them back in a glorified state like he says we'll all have. Right. Well, they're sitting there in the glorified state talking with Jesus on the top of a hill. You're like, whoa. Well, both of them, there was a little bit of a little consternation about, you know, Moses, God buried him. You say, well, he, he so he just <laughs> showing you means. the power at which he rolls. Yep. You just look at it and you say, it's it's a lot to digest mm -hmm. any way you want to slice it. it, it <laughs> I think that's why they didn't get it <clears throat> when he died. Because even in our world now, you see people believe in the unseen world, whether they're believers in Jesus or not, to some degree. I mean, that's a, there's a reason we have haunted here, here, houses. Hold it, hold it right there. I think I heard a noise. Yeah, right. here's the point. It was all about their trust and their faith in him as far as the resurrection goes and all. Correct. But you have to remember, after his first appearance, the world, within three to 400 years later, began to count time by this individual. Correct. Time. That's why the first time he appeared was to do away with the sins of the world. Well, it wouldn't be, it, it makes it easier for me to believe. I'm like, wait a minute here. He's coming back, but why is it we're all counting time by him? Mm -hmm. It's 2,021 years since he showed up. I'm just saying it, it, it's not as hard for me to believe. How in the world did the world end up counting time by him if he wasn't here yep. and if he didn't do what the, what the prophet said he was going to do that's, in Matthew, Mark, Luke, quoted, and John? That's why I quoted Hebrews 13, 8. It's a, it's a, you'll spend the rest of your life grasping that which is, is interesting because people do really get caught up in what we call you're just coming back and they say the well, that's time but yeah, it, yeah, well, that's, well, unbe well, that's well, unbelievable well, i can't believe it right. you said well why is it you're counting time by him the countdown and you're the ones you're looking at your calendar so are we that's why i was being sarcastic <laughs> I mean, earlier when i said having a beard saves you time it actually doesn't Save you. That's right. <laughs> yeah, but, but we. That's right. That's the way we look at it. You know, we look we, at everything. The, the ticking watch. That's exactly right. All right, we're out of time. We'll pick this up. We're next out of time. time. <laughs> we're out of time. Thanks for listening to the Unashamed Podcast. Help us out by rating us on iTunes, and don't miss an episode by subscribing on YouTube. And be sure to click that little bell to get notified about new episodes. And for even more content that you won't get anywhere else. Subscribe to Blaze TV at blazetv.com slash unashamed.